Christmas around the world look like for the missionaries that we support. We'll be able to share most of their names, but we won't share some because they're in sensitive areas. These are the missionaries that are on the prayer calendar that we hand out during missions emphasis. Our first stop around the world is France. Our missionaries in France are Aaron and Nanette Hope. In France, families use an Advent wreath or Advent calendar to prepare for Christ's arrival. Beginning four Sundays before Christmas, a candle is lit each Sunday night while scripture is read. For children, an Advent calendar lit with little doors is used to teach patience since you are allowed to open only one door each day to find a small surprise. Families attend Midnight Mass on December 24th. A cherry wood yule log is left burning all night with some food and drink left out in case Mary and the baby Jesus come out or come during the night. We, we support two couples in Netherlands, Kent and Leslie Lin Wei and John and Joy Sisks. All right, quiet on the set, take 32. Hello, we are John and Joy Sisk, your missionaries in Elmira, Netherlands. We appreciate the faithful investment of Sumter First in our ministry through prayer and finances. Every December 5 is a holiday called Santa Claus Night here in the Netherlands. The children all put out their shoes near the fireplace or the front door just before bedtime. The belief is that while they are sleeping, Santa Claus will come and fill their shoes with a chocolate initial and a small inexpensive toy. It's a fun practice, but expectations are minimal. As we're approaching this holiday soon in the Netherlands, we've been thinking of a spiritual correlation. Do we limit God by coming to him with the equivalent of a small empty shoe, keeping our expectations minimized? Or do we recognize his greatness by backing up a truck and asking him to fill its bed with his blessings? Also, do we ask only for ourselves or do we ask for others who have never heard of him? Is my heart large enough to look beyond our own earthly concerns to the dangerous spiritual situation of those darkened in their minds through the deception of false religions or the rejection of God altogether? While the church has been making many wonderful advances around the globe, in Europe it has shrunk dramatically. In fact, the number of believers active in their faith has fallen precipitously. The vast majority of Europe's 530 million people adhere to a worldview called secularism and they are in spiritual darkness. Secularism denies faith and promotes no purpose greater than self. It's a very empty existence. As we in the rich Pentecostal Christian experience approach Christmas, let's make Psalm 2-8 our main ask on our spiritual wish list. Ask me, and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. If we all ask together, we should expect a harvest like none before across the Netherlands and around the world. God bless you. We're in Finland now. Our missionaries in Finland are Travis and Cindy Michael and Stephen Sean Ravel. Hi kids, this is Cindy Michael, I'm missionary associate in Finland, working with Project Rescue. And I'm just here today to give you a few little fun facts about Finland and their Christmas traditions. The first one is Pikoyolo. Pikoyolo is little Christmas. And this is celebrated, since they don't have Thanksgiving, it could be celebrated at Thanksgiving time or in the first part of the Christ of December. And it's a lot of fun and Pikoyolo just means little Christmas. Another fun thing is Yolopuki. So what is Yolopuki? Well, in Finnish, Yolopuki means Christmas goat. But is it really a goat? I don't think so. Yolopuki is the Finnish word for Santa Claus. A little bit strange to be calling it a goat, but that's what it is, Yolopuki. 
Another thing that's really fun is the Santa Claus Village. It's in Rovaniemi, Finland, which is at the Arctic Circle. So when you visit there, you can see the, where the Arctic line is, and you can take photos there, and it's a lot of fun to go and visit Santa Claus and also see some reindeer. And a, another big thing about Finland is that family is important and they don't celebrate their biggest day on December 25th like we do in the U.S. They celebrate their biggest day on December 24th and it's all for family. Now yes they do invite some people over and they can have a lot of fun but it's mostly focused on family and, and being together and it's always so cold that so they just stay inside a lot. So those are some Fun little facts about Finland and their Christmas traditions. Which one do you think is the weirdest? I think the name Yolopuki is pretty strange. But anyway, you guys have a great Christmas. And remember that whether it's Pico Yolo or Yolopuki, the big reason that we celebrate Christmas is that it was the gift that God gave us of Jesus to die for our sins. Thank you. The tradition is unique to the families that work in the land. Kozlovo is the old tradition of the Busmi ceremony. Ceremony starts early on Christmas Eve when one of the men of the family goes to the woods and cuts down an oak tree, Busmi. When, when the sun goes down, the tree is cut into smaller pieces. The whole family, except for the house of the head hold, house, household, head of the household, gathers outside. When then, from oldest to youngest members, pick up the pieces of the tree, enter the house where the head of the household starts a fire. Two pieces are used to, to form a cross, and a candle is placed on top of the cross. And the head of the household lights the candle while leading the family in prayer. After the family eats together, the table is left as is the fire, the fire. Iron with the Busmi are left burning all night. Our next stop is Israel with Tim and Elizabeth Hansen. Hi, we're Tim and Elizabeth Hansen and we're serving in Israel. First, we want to thank you for your prayers and your faithful support there at yes. Sumter First Assembly. Um, we want to especially bring you a Christmas greeting from Israel. As many of you know, most of the Jewish people here do not celebrate Christmas, uh, but they celebrate what's called Hanukkah. And it's a celebration of a miracle that took place about 200 years before Christ when they were purifying the temple and they needed to keep the, the fire burning there in the temple. And they were running out of oil. They had enough for one day. And it needed to last eight days before the next shipment of oil would arrive. And God miraculously stretched that oil over those eight days. So now when they celebrate Hanukkah, they, they add one lighted candle for each day until the, the, nine, uh, the, the candle menorah is filled with um, all the lighted candles. And they also buy gifts for each other. So Elizabeth's going to tell you a little bit about what our Christmas may be like here this year. So we're living in a guest house and we rent a small apartment uh, where, but our guest house belongs to the congregation and it's filled with uh, refugees from the Ukraine. And we even have some Russian uh, immigrants that are making Aliyah to get out of Russia, Jewish, Jewish Russians that are coming to Israel to make this their home now. And uh, so we're hoping, and we're, we're hoping to have Christmas together this year. 
Um, we have a lot of kids among this group. Um, a lot of their kids are attending our schools here in Israel, and some of them are in Gan, which is kindergarten. So um, I think it'll be a special time this year. We're one big family. We've been together uh, for more than half a year since the war began. Our congregation's been housing and feeding um, the immigrants here without charge, and it's been a very special honor to work together. So once again, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. In our church supports one missionary in Egypt and one in North Africa. We also support Donor Rod, who serves with Africa's Hope and visits many different African countries. And we support Gil and Karen Strong, who serves in East Africa and the Indian Ocean Basin. We have included them on this stop of our trip, but we are going to focus on Egypt. Much of Egypt's small Christian population belongs to the Coptic Orthodox Church. They celebrate Christmas on January 7. For the 23 days before Christmas, they participate in the Holy Nativity Fast. They don't eat anything containing animal products. On January 6, Christmas Eve Mass begins around 10 p.m. and ends somewhere between midnight and 4 a.m. On Christmas Day, friends and family gather to eat a Christmas meal that breaks the Advent long fast. Many meals include lamb soup, bread, and rice. Missionaries in Kenya are Kevin and Robin McGee. Many people travel to their hometowns to celebrate with their families. Christmas is seen as a time to honor the birth of Christ. Spend time uh, with loved ones and eat delicious food. Families decorate cypress trees and Santa rides a camel. To celebrate the truth of Christmas, churches hold night vigils or Kesha on Christmas Eve. Worshippers uh, gather to sing hymns and carols as well as uh, recreate the whole event with nativity plays or dances. Churches ring their bells at midnight to, to mark the birth of Jesus while people sing praise uh, songs to honor the start of Christmas Day. Some singers go door to door to their in their neighborhood uh, and each household will give uh, the singer small cash donations as a thank you. On Christmas Day, the singers uh, pre present to this money uh, to their church when uh, they uh, return for Christmas Day services. Now to Zanzibar with Graham, Graham and Karen Smith. Hello, First Assembly of God. Merry Christmas from 8,139 miles away in Zanzibar, East Africa. This is Glenn and Karen Smith. We've been asked to share a tradition from our area here for Christmas and share that with you. And the reason we chose to, to do this video in darkness is because there are no Christmas traditions here. We live in a Muslim context, and so this is what it is like here. So what do we do? We have a Christmas party every year. We invite all our friends, students, neighbors, so that they can hear about Jesus and come to know him and how much he loves them. So the next time that you see darkness or you think of darkness, or remember this video where you see darkness behind us and around us, pray for Zanzibar. They need your prayers, and they need to know Jesus. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry 
next is Maza Kali. Maza Kali with Carl and Terry Gibbs. Hi, I'm Carl. I'm Terry Gibbs, and we're sending you Christmas wishes from Mozambique, Africa. And in Mozambique, they speak Portuguese, so I'd like to say Paragresia, Feliz, Natal, e Próspero, Novo Ano. Sandra Eurasia is next. Gerald and Madeline Brannon are part of the Euro Missionary Resource Team that helps support our missionaries located in this region. And Tiffany and Justin Quote serve God in the region as well. Christ Christmas is not a religious holiday in many of the countries of Central Eurasia. Though Western cultures is influencing some countries to adopt to the secular tradition that are representative of Christmas. Bonnie Bunting's long service in, in God in India. We support her, her content of her parents' organ. Continue to continue continuation of her parents' organization. Calcutta Mercy and in a country of over one billion and people Christians only make Christians make up t up to only 2% of the population in Mumbai <laughs> Christians families walk to the midnight to midnight mass after mass a feast is shared and small gifts are exchanged in southern India Christians often put put small oil burning clay lamps on their flat roofs to show neighbors that Jesus is the light of the world on Christmas Eve in Goa. Christmas Christians hang paper lanterns between the houses to remind people that of the star that led the wise men. Next, Josh and Lindy Johnson are serving in Nepal. Christians in Nepal couldn't openly celebrate Christmas until after Nepal was declared a secular state in 2007. The traditions they follow are the result of visiting missionaries and the Nepali Christian that returned during the 1950s after fleeing to India during the Rana dynasty. We are in Laos now. Our missionaries there is Sa Sean Seymour. Laos is a, is a Buddhist and socialist community. So there is no holiday for the celebrations of Christmas. Christmas is only celebrated by a very small population of Christians. The Christmas day that Christmas is celebrated on wearing for churches to church and deepen, depends, depends on when the local officials allow church members to meet 
church is, prepare presentations of song, dance, and dramas that tell the story of and meaning of Christmas. Since local officials are more open during Christmas time, churches are there celebrating to make better relationships with non-Christians and government officials, as well as sharing the story of Jesus Christ in many of the communities of church chapel. Churches is not real recognized or is limited or at risk. Next is Japan, where Drake Bartlett is a missionary. Christmas has only been celebrated in Japan in the last few decades as American customs have been adopted into Japanese culture. Christmas time is not seen as a religious holiday since there are very few Christians in Japan. It is seen as a time to spread happiness. Christmas Eve is thought of as a romantic holiday similar to Valentine's Day here in the United States. Couples have a romantic dinner together and exchange gifts. A popular Christmas Day dinner is fried chicken, making this the busiest time for KFC in Japan. The, popu the popularity is attributed to a 1974 Kentucky for Christmas ad campaign. Any Christmas decorations are taken down on December 25th as families prepare for Oshogatsu, Japanese New Year, which is celebrated from December 31st to uh, January 4th. The missionaries there are Nick and Marlon, K Marlon Kate Crate, like, like, like other Christian nations, Christmas is celebrated in Palau on on December 25th, all week long, Palauans are wearing their best red t-shirts, decorate everything, and give nightly gifts to kids in Bethlehem Park, which is glowy with angels, ornaments, and palm trees. And artificial parsarota, parsarosta, Pato, Paterosa pie, Pauli, Paulins, Palauan, where they're baked. Palauan dances are done for the Supreme Court's annual holiday party. These dances include grass skirts, a lot of and a lot of shouting. Sun, Sun Wayne is our missionary in Vanuatu. Christmas time in Vanuatu is school break. Students will rest December and June, January. Return to class in February. Work ends as well, and it's a time when everyone rests. Vanuatu is mostly Christian. But instead of snow angels, 
They make sand angels. It's a time when they go to church in the evening and on Christmas Day. They attend church again and eat lap lap for lunch like they usually do on Sunday. Gifts are given gifts like handmade wool baskets. Costa Rica has many Christmas traditions, and this is this is where missionaries David and Amy Kite write says, Christmas begins the second week of December, and the Christmas season is over on February 2nd. One of the most well-known traditions is the National Horse Parade. Horse riders from all around ride through the streets on December 26th. In 2018, more than 3,000 horse riders paraded to co for Costa Rica. The, the, there's another horse parade the second week of January along with the bull run, which is for anyone who is brave enough to face a bull. Jay and Nancy Dickinson are missionaries that we support in Nicaragua. Nicaraguans observe a special holiday on December 7 and 8 called La Purisma. Families build an altar inside the entrance to their home, and guests are invited to come and worship at the altar. Guests are also given special gifts such as sweets from sugarcane. On January 6th, the Feast of the Epiphany, it is the three kings who bring small gifts for children, for the children. The night before, children put out their shoes with grass in them. For the camels of Maggi, the grass is replaced with sweet, tree, sweet treats and small gifts. Our next stop is Honduras with Ken and Griselda Harrow. Hello and God bless you, First Assembly of God in Sumter, South Carolina. I'm missionary Ken Harrell, and we want to say thank you for supporting Harrell Family Missions and the Children's Gift Ministry in Honduras. We want to bring you this Christmas greeting and say Merry Christmas and God bless you to each and every one of you. Thank you for your prayers, for the Children's Gift Ministry, for the Back to Classes with Jesus program, for the church planting and building efforts that we do here in Honduras. It is your vision for missions that keeps us going. May God richly bless you and your families this Christmas from the Harrell family, your missionaries in Honduras. Arizona, Alice Collins and Janice Sullivan are missionaries to Native Americans. A holi and holiday yet celebrations vary from one tribe to the next. A number of the cultures uh, have a friendly figure who treats children to candy and gifts during Christmas. For many Native Americans, this gentleman is known as the Handsome Fellow. Legend refers to a Creek leader named uh, Chief Hobby Thacko, which translates to Handsome Fellow. The Huron people have an original Christmas carol that tells the story of Christ's in the manger. The carol was first translated into French, then to English. Within a lodge of broken bark, 
the tender babe was found. A ragged rope of rabbit skin wrapped his beauty round. But as the hunter braves drew nigh, the angel's song rang loud and high. Jesus, your king is born. Jesus is born in excelsis gloria. Richard and Hope Stewart. Yeah, I want to say hello to the church family there in Sumter. I'm a missionary Richard Stewart. My wife, Hope, and I, we serve here among the Native American uh, reservations in Montana. And uh, I want to take just a second and give you a quick update of things that have been happening here and also to tell you thank you so much for your partnership in the ministry. Uh, Indian Youth Camp is a ministry in June that reaches out to kids from across the state. We had 250 kids and what a wonder it is to watch them encounter Jesus Christ through the worship, through the altar times, through the, the messages and through the games and the fun activities. We also not only want to see kids meet Jesus but also learn how to walk with him. As a result of that, we have several things that are going on. This summer, we've had two uh, events that partner with the local churches. One is the Way Youth Camp. There was 34 students that were baptized there on the Blackfeet Indian Reservation down at the Cutbank Creek in the ranch setting that the Pentecostal message first came to the Blackfeet people. Uh, along with that, we just returned Wednesday from Rocky Boy for a back-to-school event that again connected kids to their local churches and to local youth groups where they can not only meet Jesus, but also learn how to walk with him. And we just want to say thank you for all that you do for missions, not only here in Montana, but around the world. God bless. Uh, next stop is mi in Missouri. We support an organization that ministers to Muslim people, and Mark bring her that up. Also in Missouri is Global University with Fred and Krista Kova. Greetings to our Sumter First Assembly family. Crystal and I wish you a Merry Christmas, and we would like to update you on our family. Our oldest son, Phil, and his wife, Katie, have been married for two years and are expecting a baby boy in February. This will be our first grandchild. Our son, Stephen, is a certified flight instructor in Kansas and will be working for Piedmont Airlines in Charlotte by next summer. Our daughter, Hope, continues to compete in ice skating. She is 18 now and is old enough to coach. My wife, Crystal, works at a nurse staffing agency helping to schedule nurses for medical facilities. She loves interacting with people and ministering to them where they are. That's our family, and together we are your missionaries serving as the chief engineer of IT at Global University. It is a unique position in that I am the only FCC licensed broadcast engineer within Assemblies of God World Missions. Since returning from itineration in late 2021, we have continued our work with the India College of Ministry. Also known as ICOM, this hybrid online Bible school is growing exponentially. I was able to visit India in May of 2022 to collect video footage of our students and conduct camera production training for ICOM's media team. In addition, I was able to participate in four graduations, totaling almost 700 students. There are now over 44,000 students in ICOM and almost 10,000 graduates. We are also now involved with the Central Asia Theological Institute. This school will provide much needed discipleship training for people in Central Asia countries, like Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, and at least one major persecuted people group there. Please pray as we work to reach Central Asia for Jesus. Also pray for the students of both of these Bible schools as they take what they've learned 
and use them to help the people around them. And pray for our translators, some of whom face imprisonment and worse just for translating our materials to help reach people for Jesus. Your prayers open doors that are closed spiritually and provide the spirit strength when ministry is challenging. Please join us in prayer for these projects and other opportunities that God gives us. Your support is crucial to our ministry. Thank you so much for everything you are doing to reach our world for Jesus. You are making an impact around the world. Now we're in Louisiana with Rick and Patty Roberts. They work with ministry, or ministering to, to the Muslim community. Among other Christmas traditions, on the leaves, levees, uh, you'll find uh, the local uh, Christmas lights are not colored bulbs, but instead dozens of uh, 20 to 30 feet high flaming pyramids of burning logs. The Christmas bonfires are built by families, friends, and co-workers who visit, cook, and mingle between the fire. It's, it's, it's similar to football tailgating, and the practice has continued uh, for generations. Ask a local about why bonfires are made uh, and celebrated here, and the most common response is that uh, the fires uh, light the way for Santa Claus or Papa Noel, as the Conjans say. To find the homes of local good uh, girls and boys. Our next stop is Ohio, where. Robert Spector and Rock and Israel are. Shalom and Christmas greetings to First Assembly in Sumter, in South Carolina. First of all, I want to thank you for your missionary support. What a blessing you are to our ministry. I'm Robert Spector, missionary to the Jewish people in America. Six million Jews, or seven million Jews in America, and only about one uh, percent believe that Jesus is the Messiah. They need to hear the good news that Jesus is Jewish, that He's the Messiah of Israel, and soon coming King. Wanted to wish you a Merry Christmas and let you know that there are many uh, Jewish uh, children celebrating Hanukkah this time. Hanukkah, of course, is the ce celebration of uh, Feast of dedication and uh, uh, celebrated with uh, eight days of Hanukkah. There's a menorah that has nine branches, one branch to light the eight days of Hanukkah, and the children received a receive a gift uh, each of the eight days. So pray that uh, they will receive the gift of God, that the Lord will be known to them. It's a uh, wonderful family celebration, Hanukkah, and uh, we want to reach out to the Jewish people with the good news that Jesus is their Messiah. God bless you. Merry Christmas. Have a happy new year. And um, thank you again for your support. several ministries here in South Carolina. We support adult and teen challenge with Wayne Powell, Builders International with Jimmy and Joanna Sellers, and Ford Chip, Chi Alpha Coco, Joe and Janelle Holloway, Patrick and Bethany Hamba, 
and let's hear from the other four couples. Hey guys, it's the Jordans. And the Stowes. We are just getting back from a long weekend with our students at our annual fall retreat. Yeah, uh, we saw some students give their lives to the Lord. Uh, some people got baptized. It was really incredible. God's doing some amazing things at USC. Thank you guys so much for your support. We love you. Yeah. We miss you. And Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Thank you for joining us uh, for Christmas Around the World with our missionaries. And thank you for helping Goethe to support them as they follow the Lord, leading Goethe to preach the gospel to every creature. The missionaries are able to serve because of your faithful giving. Merry Christmas. Amen. Let's hear it one more time for our children. And Miss Diane and Miss Charity, thank you guys so much. Wow. If, if asked if we're a missions church, the answer is yes. We believe in missions. We believe in our missionaries because we have a job to do before Christ comes back, and that is to reach this world with the message of Jesus Christ. Amen? And we all have something to do within that. It's not, not just our missionaries. Every one of us have something to do. Well, would you please stand with me uh, as we get ready to dismiss this morning? And I'll be up at the altar if there's anyone who need prayer or anything. I'll be here just for a few more minutes after service, but let's pray. Father, thank you again uh, for, for our missionaries and for all the good works that are taking place. We're excited to hear about salvations and baptisms in the Holy Spirit. We're excited to hear about our missionaries in places where the gospel is not present. And we're thankful for the light that they are where they're at. We ask for your hedge of protection around them, for your blessings upon them, and for miracles, signs, and wonders to take place as they minister the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not only through our missionaries, but also through us as we see our mission field right here in Sumter, South Carolina. We love you, Father, and praise you in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Amen. Don't forget tonight at 6 o'clock, the Agape Meal and Gift Exchange. With that being said, you are dismissed.